And thank you traders for uh, showing up. And I'm looking forward to this presentation. I'm gonna talk about how I use Ichimoku Cloud and Elliott Wave together to find really, really good high probability trade setups. Um, love to, to uh, I'm gonna share this with you. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get something out of it. And I'd really like to make it interactive. Um, by all means, ask questions as we go. And I will be happy to field them on the fly here for you. All right, well, uh, before I get started, we're gonna, I'm gonna share some of the current trades that I'm in. We're gonna look at some charts and I'll offer my opinion on them. But just, you know, I'm a, I'm a trader, I'm not a financial advisor. I'll, I'll tell you what I like, I'll give you my opinion on charts. But whether anybody participates in the trade, that's your decision, right? Um, I don't know your situation, I know what mine is and I know what I like, but, so I'm, I'm not giving financial advice, I'm sharing what I do, each person's gonna make their own decision. So I'll, I'll walk through the tools, the primary tools that I use in chart analysis, right? It comes down to analyzing a chart and deciding, you know, if there's a high probability setup. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Dow Theory, I really like it. Um, a brief overview of each local cloud, talk a little bit about Elliott Wave, a very simple version. And I, don't, I know some people roll their eyes when they hear Elliott Wave, I used to. Um, the classic approach is overly complex, um, but there's a, a very simple, easy approach to it that I'll, I'll show you here. I'll talk about how I use them together, and I'll share some of my current favorite trades. Um, that still have good entries on them, and I'd be happy to take a look at any charts that you are interested in analyzing, and whether that would be stocks, Forex, futures, um, these concepts apply to any class of, of trading instrument. In fact, let's start there, because um, it's one thing to prepare some slides, and I got a couple here that, that demonstrate the, uh, the concepts, you know, in as clear a way as I know how, but again, any, anybody can go find an idealized chart that fits a theory. Um, I'd be happy to start by just looking at a couple of charts that you're interested in, and I'll offer my analysis on them. And then we'll go talk, take a look at, at the tools and actually how I use it, okay? So I'm, I'm showing Tesla, and I was just looking at this uh, while I was getting ready, while the other speaker was wrapping up. And uh, Tesla is an example of a, of a chart that uh, right now I wouldn't touch. I've, I've traded it in the past. But when I look at this chart, and I, when I do training, I like to train traders that you ought to be able to determine within a few seconds of looking at a chart, whatever timeline, timeline or instruments you're looking at, whether there's any, whether there's any possibility here, whether you should just run from the chart, right? Whether it's, you know, there's really no clear pattern or, or when I look at Tesla, um, boy, if you look at these swings starting in April, these are completely random swings and they're violent. Right, you can get lucky and make a lot of money, but you can also get unlucky and have it blow through a stop. Um, and of, of course, you know the reason for the volatility is Elon Musk is a volatile guy, right? And, and he's uh, tweeting his way to oblivion. I think today they're down what over five percent, and saw a headline that uh, in addition to the SEC charges, you know the investigation now there's potential criminal proceedings. That's um, so I, I wouldn't touch this. Or maybe intraday, if I was into that, there'd be some volatility plays here. But you know, trying to to swing trade or position trade something like Tesla, that would be really, really hard. And if you notice, one of the things is, you know, what regardless of the tools that you use to define support and resistance levels. So I'm using the Ichimoku Cloud, um, and I also have the 200-day simple moving average here. Right, Tesla. You know, if you're going to use a method, one of the things you want to look at when you look at a chart is to go, does this, does this particular chart, does it conform? Does it follow well the tools that I'm using? And if the answer to that for Tesla would be no, it blows through the Ichimoku cloud, it blows through the moving averages on a regular basis, completely unpredictable. So that'd be one I wouldn't touch uh, for now. Um, Al would like to look at GLNG. I never heard of that. I always get excited when I see a brand new symbol and it's like maybe there'll be something cool here that I have not heard of in the past. And it's taken a moment for the data to come up. I typed it in. No, don't tell me I'm going to have a chart, uh, a platform problem. That would be a total bummer. And it does look like it is locking up. And that's going to really be disappointing. 
<sighs> yeah, uh, Bernard wants to look at GWRE. I want to look at it too. Let's see if this thing uh, frees itself up here in a minute. Because for now, uh, Trade Station is locked, and that is a bummer. So I guess I will go take a look at a couple slides, and we'll come back and see if it uh, if it recovers. And if not, that's going to be super disappointing. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Dow theory. Uh, this is a simple version of it. Charles Dow, really interesting guy. He wrote. He actually founded the Wall Street Journal, and he wrote a series of articles in the 1890s. Um, uh, about research and findings and his thoughts on on how the market moves and uh, So a small part of that was he observed and those those articles then got you know compiled into a couple books and It's called Dow theory. But one of the things he noticed it was about trends. He said um, Hey, the rules for an uptrend are as long as as long as you know, cause price does not move in a straight line and as traders You know we want to know hey is the trend still going or should I get out of it? Has it changed? And he provided a really good definition where it says, hey, it's an uptrend as long as it goes on to make higher highs, and then any pullback is a higher low, it does not go below the previous low, and then it goes on into higher highs. And that's how an uptrend moves. And that can be really helpful. It's really hard to call the exact top of a trend, but we can know when the trend has definitively ended and when to exit it. And this works on any time frame, whether it's a daily chart or a one minute intraday or a tick chart or a range chart, whatever settings you're using. Just the exact opposite for a down a downturn, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. And as long as that pattern continues, you're in a downturn, a bearish trend. Um, again, really helpful because if you're in, you know, you're long a trade and it's going up and you got some nice profit and it starts to pull back and you, you know, of course, start to wonder, should I get out? Well, as long as it stays above the last um, higher low, right, that this uptrend is likely to continue. And these are also great places to put your stop point, because if price does go below them, there's a good chance that the trend then has ended. And that would be a good time to exit a long trade is when the trend has ended. So it takes three data points to confirm that a bullish trend has begun. You wanna see a high, and then you wanna see a higher low where price does not go down below the previous low, it can go equal to it. But as long as it finds support, and then heads up and then puts in a new high, goes above the previous high, that is a very strong indication, a high probability that an uptrend has begun. And then we carry on with higher highs, higher lows. And then when the trend is getting ready to end, you'll see it will lose momentum. It will not go on and make a new high. It'll pull back, probably go higher, but fail to put in a new high. And that's a warning sign. And then when it takes out that previous low, you have a pretty good indication that, that at least this leg of a bullish trend is over. And, and some sort of pullback or correction has begun. Again, this applies to any time frame. And that end of a bullish trend is exactly what the beginning of a bearish trend looks like. Low, lower high, new low. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. On it goes till it fails to put in a new low, takes out the prior high. We probably got the beginning of at least a correction up or the resumption of, of an original uptrend, something. This, this particular leg of you know, of price movement on the chart has changed direction. So that's that's pretty good stuff. And that's really just helpful rules, right? It seems so simple, but you know, we don't maybe know that until it's been pointed out in, in a simple way. Uh, Ichimoku Cloud, I started using this in my trading about two years ago, and it's made a big difference. I really like it. So, this, uh, this gentleman on the right here, this is Goichi Hasada. He's uh, the guy who developed Ichimoku Cloud. He began working on that in the 1930s in Japan. He was actually a Japanese journalist. Um, he wasn't a mathematician or a trader or a finance guy, he was a journalist. But he began working on it in the 30s and he published it in a book in 1969. And of course now it's been programmed um, and is available on any trading platform. As a, as a free indicator, except Ninja. For some reason, Ninja Trader doesn't include it, but you can go into their forums and download a free copy of Ichimoku Cloud. So Ichimoku Cloud, um, you don't have to buy anything. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indicator that's included on uh, platforms. I use uh, some unique settings, but I'm using the free version of it that comes with TradeStation, my trading platform. So uh, Ichimoku Cloud, so let me ask you guys, how many of you believe that moving averages matter as an indicator, as a way of 
analyzing you know price movement as a technical analysis technique how many of you think that uh, uh, moving averages matter just maybe i think there's a button you can press to raise your hand or type in yes something like that respond in some way bernard says yes bradley uh sid says strong and antonella says no you don't that's all right okay a lot of indicators are based in some fashion right on moving averages um there's some derivative of it uh only for trend identification yeah um so each local cloud at its core it's just a different way to look at um moving averages um so a simple moving average sma is calculated by taking the average closing price over x number of previous bars so you can change your settings and go you know as people use a five a five bar moving average or 20 or 50 or you know 100 200 whatever there's a lot of different things and people use multiple uh time frames multiple moving averages so they got a slow and a fast and a medium and they're looking for crossovers and, and direction and trend identification trend change okay and uh, susan i'll tell you my settings at the end i'll show you how to get those okay and hopefully uh, my chart will recover and we'll be able to to uh do it on some charts too so a simple moving average is simply taking the average closing price over some number of previous moving bars. Ichimoku Cloud takes the average of the highest high and the lowest low over X number of previous bars, and it has two look back periods, and then has some derivatives from that. So it's, a, it's essentially a two line moving average. Although, and I think it's, it's important that they, Ichimoku Cloud looks at the average of the highest high and the highest low. Um, taking an average of the closing price ignores highs and lows, right? So it, it's taking kind of an average of an average where each local cloud looks where price actually went and then takes an average of that. And so I think there's a degree of accuracy that's included there. And then um, it takes those two moving averages and it you can see here is what it looks like on a chart. This is a screenshot, right? It, it plots an area. Uh, the, the green line is the faster moving average. Um, the red line is the slower moving average, and it plots an area between them. Uh, in Japanese, it's called kumo. Uh, we would say cloud. Okay. And the, and the important thing about just like it would with simple moving averages is you look for crossovers when you know when 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 price is heading down and the, and the fast is under the slower uh, calculated line. You can see it's shaded red and it says, hey, this you know, price was moving down, and when it crosses back over, it says, hey, price is moving up. And, and what it does with these lines is it confirms trends. So when we get a crossover and we get a change in color, that confirms, you know, it helps us confirm that a trend really happened, is changing or is beginning or continuing. And it also predicts with some pretty good accuracy some support levels. So where would in, in an uptrend, where would price pull back to? even if the trend is gonna continue and then find support and continue on. And I'm showing a chart here of Kronos. This is a trade we took, and I'm gonna show you how I combine it with uh, Elliott Wave as well, we did here. So this, this a simple, simple version of Elliott Wave. So this, this big, this is obviously a big dramatic move, right, on Kronos from about two bucks up to uh, $12. Uh, I think you would agree that that is a, a dramatic move. And then we had a correction. So in Elliott wave parlance, this would be a wave three. Then we had a wave four correction. And this came onto you know, my radar. We became aware of it right back here. And we started watching it. And we looked for evidence of the next impulsive wave. So this, this first move was the big positive move up. This was a correction. And then we looked for another positive move to go even higher. And we said, oh, look, you know, we got a little, little consolidation here. And then price moved. And um, it crossed through the Ichimoku cloud. Now, that it had already crossed here and said, it looks like we're going to get some upward momentum. And now price broke through the cloud. And this was evidence for us that the next wave was beginning, the next impulsive move up. We took a long at a 714, took profit at about 10, took more profit at about 12, had trailed our stop up actually trailing it on a 60 minute chart with a little more granular price movement. And we exited the thing um, down here at about 1150. 
we made 30 40 percent over 40 percent on this trade in, in about two weeks it was awesome right and and this is exactly the kind of sets we're look, setups we're looking for you know not all of them are this fast or this dramatic but that's a good example of using um each local cloud as a confirmation right and then elliott wave to confirm you know to analyze price movement overall i'll talk more about how we do that i'm going to look back over at trade station and see if it is uh um alive or if we are just completely out of luck there um i'm gonna try and kill it see if it will die a graceful death and we can come back um doesn't really look like it that, that's unfortunate you know this happened the last time i was presenting on uh was go to a webinar and I wonder if the latest version has a some kind of conflict. I have to look into that. All right. Let me continue with the slides here. So this was each local cloud basics. Here's Elliott wave theory. And so interesting that Ralph Nelson Elliott developed this back in the 30s, same time that uh, Goichi Hasada was working on uh, each local cloud. And all, all Elliott said was, Hey, it, it, it appears that there's collective investor psychology, crowd psychology that moves between optimism and pessimism in some natural, observable waves, a series of impulsive and incorrective waves saying, hey, it looks like when, when there's a big price movement that afterwards, at some point, there, there's a correction, right? The price pulls back after a big move. And then after that pullback, um, it looks like that resumes, right? I, you got this beginning, right? This is really where Dow theory comes in. This helps me be, uh, identify that you know a new trend is beginning. I don't try to trade wave one or two. Typically, they're very small. Um, I try to trade wave three or four or five. And then ABC corrections afterwards can be tricky. They can be smaller than this. And so there's enough trading instruments that all I really have to worry about is try, trying to trade wave three, a big, big impulsive move, a, a, a new trend. A correction after a big trend, and then um, a continuation of that original trend after a correction. That's all I need to worry about. I got three trade setups. Okay, uh, they can you can flip this on its head, and it works exactly the same way down in a bearish trend. Same principles, same measurements apply. I trade both bullish and bearish markets. Happy to go long or short, whatever the setup is. You know, this is uh, I like to show this slide saying, "Hey, Elliott Wave's easy." Um, here's the classic approach, you know, with super millenniums and sub millenniums and primaries and minuets, right? There's just 144 permutations that you have to memorize and then you got it. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Um, again, I'm only trying to trade wave three, four, or five. It's the only setup I'm looking for. And I think this is overly complex, and the people who practice this can't agree on all these uh, uh, subtle, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, indications here. Um, I, I think Elliott Wave is easy, and, and it, especially when you're only looking for three setups. There's a great book on, uh, it's available on Amazon, it's called Elliott Wave Techniques Simplified, and it's written by Bennett McDowell. Bennett uh, uh, was, is my mentor. He helped me get, you know, turn the corner uh, several years ago from, as I was trying to transition from fundamental trading to technical trading, you know, like all of us, I was trying indicators and doing this and going down different paths. And, and I ended up meeting Bennett and uh, um, he mentored me and helped me turn the corner to becoming a consistent, very profitable trader. Um, and ultimately uh, we started working together and I wrote a chapter in his book. So I like to say with a little tongue in cheek that I didn't write the book on Elliott Wayne, but it did help. And you can get this on Amazon, it's a great deal. You probably want the hardback because seeing charts and stuff on Kindles I found isn't isn't that great. But this this book, you know, really does belong on every trader's uh, bookshelf, and I think you'll find some valuable information in it. So there's that. Okay, here's what it looks like in practice on on a real chart. This is Veil, vale, which is interesting. This is uh, a chart from uh, a while back. This is uh, 16. It's a great example and interesting because we just took a new position on Veil yesterday and we're in really nice profit on it already again. So here's here's how the Elliott waves look on a real chart. Right? Here's wave one, two, right? 
and um, three, four, five. So here's what we're looking for in a setup, right? We had a wave one and two are simply the first move up after you know a downtrend or a channel. We're looking for a first move up, Dow theory, right? High, a higher low, a new high. That's going to be wave one and two. The first move and the first pullback are wave one and two. And then we got wave three, right? Uh, so here's your wave three entry. We had a high, higher low, new high, and we got confirmation of a new trend forming when it broke through the Ichimoku cloud. Price broke above it. Wow. We went ahead and took that entry and rode that thing up. Then wave three ends, right? When, oh, I'll show you there. Here's how it looks. High, higher, low, new high. Okay, and then we, we ride this thing up and then we get stopped out eventually. We take profit along the way and we get a low, lower, high, new low. It goes down into a wave four correction. We could see it happening with the low, lower, high, new low. But at that point, we expect it to correct into a Fibonacci retracement zone of 38.2 to 61.8, these blue lines. And by the time we get confirmation that the correction is beginning, there's not a ton of profit left. So we're not going to trade that. So we just wait for the correction to end. And then here comes the next move the continuation of the original trend look wave four is over here comes a high higher low new high above the ichimoku cloud and we've got a nice wave five target zone using fibonacci extension lines between 61.8 and 100 percent that's these green lines so from this entry just over five bucks with a midpoint of seven right that's like a, a 40 percent profit that that works for me I, i'm good for that so we went ahead and took that long and, and took that trade as well. And then we use um, that same Dow theory that I talked about of higher highs, higher lows to manage the trade. So once we took our entry, right, then our, our stop is going to be under the previous low because if, if the trade fails and price goes below that previous low, it, when, the, when the trend has failed, we would want to exit the trade, right? It didn't work out. Now I say stop, that's a, that's a predefined exit point for the trade. I know some people don't like to put um you know stop market uh, orders uh, they worry about you know bad fills or they worry about market makers hunting their stops you know whatever your philosophy is no matter however you manage trades um this when i say stop i mean a predetermined exit point so whether you whether you use a limit order or you simply have an alert um the point is you definitely want to exit that trade if price hits that level and then we trail that stop right from the initial one and then price goes up into higher highs higher lows we trail up to the previous low higher highs higher low trail up to the previous lows and then we end up getting stopped out can't grab the top we don't know what the top's going to be but we can get stopped out when trend changes and by the way we take profit in thirds along the way so the the one that's running to the end here is only a third of the original position we want to make sure you know something goes wrong that we still got some you know a, a good run on the trade so we use we do stop management using uh, Dow theory. Okay, uh, this portion was like, what what symbols do you want me to analyze? And I would absolutely do that if um, I had a trading platform that was running and it is locked up hard. So I've got it looks like twenty minutes left in my presentation. Um, I'm wondering. Renee, would I have a, if I took about three minutes to reboot, could I come back? So we can do this or would I, or we, would we kill it? Yeah, we could do stockcharts.com. It's not, doesn't have my settings, which is a bummer. Um, I'm going to try one more time. Yeah, I'm not hearing from uh, Renee. Dang it. I wanted to show you some of my current trades that are all marked up on my charts. Um, let me try stockcharts.com. I'm not going to be able to configure uh, uh, indicators on it in time, but we'll look at some, and we can we can just write we can read price action as well, right? So let me try it. Um, so 
let me sign up. Let me try one more thing. Appreciate your patience. So here, I'll use Yahoo, Yahoo charts. We won't have any indicators, but we can still read price action, right? Just fine. And let me see, intervals one day. Is there a way to get candlesticks? There we go. There we go. <laughs> Jeff says, no worries. It happens all the time with the trade station. You know, I, I run trade station every day, and it's only locked up twice on me in the last six months, and it's both times when I'm presenting on uh, Go to webinar. I think they might be having a little conflict there. So check out uh, Vale. Uh, check out this move right here, high. So we, we've, you know, it's kind of been swinging. So this is a, this is a swing trade, but it looks like we might have a pretty good move starting. Right, it was in a downtrend, and then we had this high, higher low, new high. We took this. And now look, it's up uh, big time today, up 4%. So we caught a really, really nice move on Veil. Um, and, it, and it broke the Ichimoku cloud right here if we had that indicator going. So uh, that one worked out really, really well. Let me, uh, there, uh, PBR is another one. Not Pat's Blue Ribbon for any Midwesterners, but this is uh, Petrolio, Brasileiro. Um, and so we did the same thing. We saw a high, higher low, new highs, look like a new trend forming here. We had to write out a little consolidation, but now today it's up 2.47. We're about 3% profit on this thing in less than a week. So that one is an awesome trade that we are in. And uh, both of these, if you're looking for trades, still like um, PBR for an entry and, and the stop would just be right under under these, this current low, this support area, that's where our stop would be. And we got a target of um, on PBR of potentially, and it could go bigger, but we're gonna set our target based on if it were to fail at this previous high at 1250. We took our entry down, um, you know, just under 11 bucks. And so $1.50 on, on an $11 stock is, you know, about 10%. So um, it's not too bad. Uh, Bernard, we start on daily charts. Uh, we look at some 60 minute. I'm in trades an average of you know, one to three weeks for these swing and, and position trades. So daily charts are pretty good. So if you're looking for a long, I like PBR. There's still time to get into that. I still like Vail. Um, we took a short one week ago on uh, Cyrus. And we saw, here's a, here's a classic Elliott wave, right? big dramatic move down it had a correction right into a fibonacci retracement zone and i would be able to show you that on my platform and then we see the next impulsive move so the impulsive moves down here's the correction it broke it we got a low lower high new low it broke the ichimoku cloud here we're at about 10 percent profit on this cyrus short you can see running out of steam we've tightened our stop we're going to probably be out of that at about a 10 percent profit in a week um, so too late to get in on that one so uh, but that's that's one that's worth showing for sure. Uh, let's see, what were some of the symbols you guys had? Let me see if I can just offer some analysis based on price action here. And um, I'll, I'll show you Apple. Apple's worth watching. And uh, and what's interesting here, look at this price pattern. You know, of course, Apple's been on a run and who would want to bet against them? Um, but it's got a low, it's got a lower high. It has not come down below this previous low. I don't know how you get this thing here, um, but you see my X. If you were to cross this previous low, and if I had Ichimoku Cloud, Ichimoku Cloud, this thing has run away from the 200, it's pulled away from the 200, it's pulled away from the cloud, so it's got quite a bit of separation. And you know, most technical analysis would tell you that uh, you know, even in an uptrend, there's gonna be you know, higher highs, higher lows, and the lower highs often um, revert back to the mean a little bit, back to the, the big moving averages. So the, the Ichimoku cloud is sitting here at about 210. So if we were to get a, uh, 
uh, a new low below this level right here, you could get a you know five to seven dollar trade um, short. Um, we're not saying that uptrend on Apple's over yet, but there might be a little swing trade. If you were to try and I, I want to get a big correction on Apple, um, I think it's way too early. You'd have to wait see it break the cloud down below two hundred. So there's there's how we can use those tools. And if you can just imagine an Ichimoku cloud in there, kind of hard to do, right? Uh, AMD for George. You know, I've traded AMD several times. It's a fun stock. I used to work at Intel. I spent 14 years at Intel, so they were always, you know, the enemy. Uh, and I would never buy an AMD computer, but I would certainly trade uh, their stock. And this is a good example. This is in a, uh, this is in uh, a super impressive, massive up move starting last uh, May, up from you know just over ten dollars, sitting up here, got up to a high of mid 30s, right? Looks like a 3x super um, this is all wave three right and a correction a meaningful correction to AMD has not happened yet so that would be the next trade now it's too early we're not seeing any evidence just because you get a couple down bars now and then there's no evidence of a lower low lower high new low and that's again where the Ichimoku cloud you can either see is there enough distance if it's it's probably separated from the cloud because of this you know this logarithmic move this parabolic move it's probably way above the cloud and the in the 200 day moving average but you could see even if it were to pull back down to support is there enough for a swing trade um so those are it's really cool to have those tools to use that and so but too early no sign of it happening here yet um i'm watching gold let's i guess they'll have gld here i don't um i like looking at futures for the analysis so look at this big long slide in gold now gold has there, you know, it, it, these little pull-ups never never confirmed anything right because they were just lower lows lower highs lower lows lower highs something new is happening here right here's the bottom here's a high a higher low if we go take out this high gold's on man gold's on so we'll be looking for that and and it would be a correction to this move so it's going to go somewhere up in here Fibonacci retracement lines will project the target for us on gold so that that's cool uh hl for melissa Um, Hecla mining looks an awful lot like gold, doesn't it? Being that it's a mining stock. Same thing, um, watch this line right here. Um, can I blow this up? Yeah, I can blow this up. Pretty good tool. Um, can I draw a line? Yes, I can. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Watch this level right here. You want to see a break currently this level which is at uh you know 30 something 304 308 in there right this is resistance level we got a high it actually went down to a new low now we got a little high higher low hitting this prior high if it can break it you may have a trade here and it's kind of like gold we're waiting for the next high to confirm that this thing could go and if this were to go it would be cool Come on, let me grab. Yeah, get rid of that. So does that make sense? Uh, uh, have I used Hiken Ashi Ashi? No, no, I haven't. Um, I think those are. Is that either an indicator? Or is that the the bars, right? Uh, GWRE Guidewire software. Interesting. Never heard of them. It's in an impressive uptrend. No sign of it ending yet. So for for me, right, this is a very mature trend. You know, beginning back in December at 70 bucks, it's up here at 105. It's a, it's a very mature trend. So I, I I don't chase mature trends. Um, I'm waiting for the you know the the origination of a new trend. I'm waiting for a correction or a continuation after a correction. Now if we had the Fibonacci tools, this may have been a correction to this, and this may be wave five, but even so, it's too far to develop. So the next trade would be short. There's no there's way, there's no signs of that yet, right? This thing's still in its marvelous uptrend. So 
um, there's really no trade for me on GWRE. If, if I were long, I would stay long and I'd have my stop. Um, I'd start tightening it up. So I'd have a stop you know, right under this last thing right here, right? At about 102, call it 102, 103, right? I start to tighten up a little bit on smaller moves as the, as the trend gets really, really mature. Tandem, uh, Cherie, you know, we traded Tandem and, and just had an absolute home run on it. Um, you know, what a phenomenal, we're out of it now, but what a phenomenal move this was, um, Tandem Diabetes Care. You know, we, we caught it as it broke about 10 bucks and looked at this thing, went to 50. Absolute out of the park home run. It's correcting, remember, Every impulsive move someday corrects, and this one's beginning clear evidence, pretty strong move. It's probably gonna be hitting the Ichimoku cloud, it probably pulled away from it. So those tools would give you some insight there. Yeah, that's a good one to look at. We had, boy, we, we had a great one with the tandem. One more here from Vlad, NIO. Wow, what happened? Is that a IPO or something? Uh, it must have been. Yeah, it just looks like it just started. I don't, I don't play in IPOs. Um, it's an insider's game. It's an insider's game and a great way to lose money, in my opinion. So I wait until we get a good year of data on a chart before I try to trade, trade it. And that's that's my role. Plenty of other things to trade. Okay, well, let me, um, well, I managed to uh, get through here and at least offer some stuff without losing my mind here, even though I lost my trading platform. Um, if you're interested in what, what we got going on, I got a, an offer for you guys today. Um, oh, man, Bradley, Euro USD, I had that ready to show on my on TradeStation. Um, if you go look at Euro USD on a daily chart, you'll see we're in a consolidation. Just draw a horizontal line across the current consolidation. Today's price is right above it. If you get a break above that, it looks like an Elliott Wave 5 with a really big target. So that's the best I can do. <laughs> Talk you through it without showing it on a chart. I don't, I don't know if it comes up here on Yahoo. Let me try. Let me try. I want to I do my best for you guys. Um, Uh, yeah, I think I can get it. Okay. I said one more and then I'll do this one. One more, one more. Year to date, one year. Um, full screen. Uh, candle. This must not be it. That's all. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, look at current price. There's a consolidation area. If it breaks above that, um, I think we've got a pretty big upward move coming. That's what the indication is. Hey, so um, you can try my my stock and option picks. I publish them. We got nine trades right now open. That's that's average. We've been in them about uh, from yesterday till about ten days. They're in nice profit. Um, seven out of nine are in really nice profit. I showed you a couple of those. Uh, you can still get into Vail. You can still get into PBR, right? Um, so try my stock and option picks, the service. Um, it's 37 bucks for 30 days. So you can really come in and see if it's a good fit for you. After the 30 days, it's 97 a month, which is a discount from the list price. 100% money back guarantee. So come try it if it's, you know, if you think you might be interested in, if it's not a good fit, no questions asked, no hard feelings. I will absolutely give you a refund. Um, all you got to do is send an email or drop a call and it will be on its way. Only want people to, you know, want you to be happy with the service for sure. So um, let me give you this link to uh, in the chat box so you can check it out if you're interested, okay? So how's this work? So here's everything you get with this stock and option pick service, right? It, it, you get the watch list of the potential trades that I've found. Um, when we take trades, you get alerts, emails, text message when I'm getting into a new trade. It includes the uh, exact details, the entry, the stop, the target. Most trades you can trade with shares or options. I love options. Your choice. I provide the contract that I'm going to be trading it with. You get alerts, email, text message when I make a change, moving a stop, taking profit, closing the trade. You get access to a live trading room uh, Monday through Thursday. It's actually an hour now. 
Uh, let the market open. You can attend if you like. It's not required. Um, there's a recording available. We do a lot of teaching and stuff in there, answer questions, look at charts. And we do a two-minute recap. So a new trade, you can just go watch the recap, see what happened. Uh, weekly live chat, Wednesday nights. If you work during the day, you can't come to the trading room. We have an evening where you can come ask questions. We do a midweek uh, recap of the trades update. You get a one-on-one -on -one consultation. I send you a link, put time on my calendar, and you sign up, let's meet, answer any questions, get to a good start. I provide tools for risk management and option trading, um, and ongoing support and training, and there's more. Uh, I would include in this, in this webinar, so before you know the webinar ends, if you, if you sign up for my $37 trial for stock and option picks, I'm going to include um, my HMOPA Cloud course. Um, so list price of 100, uh, 247 bucks. So if you go to my website and look at the products, it's 247 bucks. It's worth it. It's a good value. It, I teach um, the exact setups and how I use HMOPA Cloud, my unique settings, how I combine it with Elliott Waves. You get my proprietary cloud settings, a written study guide, training videos, and a printable trade setup cheat sheet. So if you sign up for a $37 um, trial during this webinar, before Renee clicks the end button and it goes away, right? you'll get the stock and option picks for a month and you'll get the each and local cloud included, right? That's $247 value. So you get, you know, love to have you come on as a new customer. I'm pretty sure you're gonna be happy. Um, so I'm just trying to make an offer here that uh, would be compelling for you. So I got the link there. 37 bucks, money back guarantee, and you get 30 days stock option picks. Um, and, and by the way, you know, all the picks that I published in my subscribers, I take in my own account with my own money. And on my homepage of my website, which I can show you quickly, um, I publish my results. Publish my results of what I'm doing. I need to update them. We haven't done it since the end of July. There was a table there. And then everything that I put on my website, say I took these trades, these are my results. They are audited by a third party firm. And every quarter they produce a report. They look at what I put on the website. I send them my brokerage statements and they produce a report to see whether I'm actually doing what I say I am doing. And I am. Okay, uh, Susan, 37 bucks, you sign up for the stock picks and you get the course and the settings would be in there. All right, and I think that takes me right up to the end of my time. Thanks for your patience as uh, we had to use uh, the, the website rather than the platform, but I think we still got the, the point across and hopefully you, uh, uh, yeah, Paul, that gets you into the trading room. You can be there with us tomorrow morning. Absolutely. If you take the, if you take it, and again, if you sign up for the, uh, for the trial today during this session, you'll get the two hundred forty-seven dollar Ichimoku Cloud course included. You can still take the trial after the webinar is over, but you won't get that bonus.